Hello, in this video I will tell you about the Volume Tool in 3D LUT Creator. It allows you to add accents of brightness to subjects in the image, depending on their color. The Volume, or Channel Volume, allows you to mix information from RGB channels with the brightness component of the image. If you are familiar with Photoshop, I can say that the Volume is a channel mixer that is applied to the image in luminosity mode. For full resemblance to Photoshop, I select the Add mode in the Luma drop-down list and set the gamma slider to 1. Now, I move the point somewhere and try to recreate a similar effect in Photoshop. I send the picture to Photoshop and turn off the layer with the LUT for now. I create an adjustment layer with a channel mixer. Enable Monochrome mode. Set the same channel ratio as in the 3D LUT creator and set the layer blending mode to luminosity. Done. That's how the channel mixer works. That's how the LUT works. At first glance, this seems simple until you try to find the ratio of the channels manually. It is very easy to make white color gray or get an overexposure. At a minimum, you must ensure that the channel's ratio should be equal to 100. Besides such inconvenience, the channel mixer in Photoshop doesn't have the additional features of the volume tool, which will be discussed next. Let's see how the R, G, and B channels of this image look separately. In the red channel, the skin and the lantern are the lightest. In the green channel, the foliage is lighter, and in the blue channel, the big stone is the lightest object. Therefore, increasing or decreasing the portion of a channel, you can lighten or darken certain colors. As a rule of thumb, the closer the point to the color, the lighter it will be. And vice versa, the further the point from the color, the darker it will be. For example, I need to lighten the boy's face. I move the point in the direction of a red color. The face became lighter, the foliage and the blue stone became darker, because the point moved away from the green and blue colors. So you can darken some colors and lighten others in just one click. The moving of point doesn't change the brightness of completely neutral objects, since the proportions of the channel for the neutral are equal. If I reduce the saturation to zero on the channels tab, the volume will work with the discolored image and it will not change. But you can change the brightness by holding the shift key and pulling up or down on the point. In this case, the brightness of the entire image will change according to the law of the gamma curve. What if I, for example, need to darken all the colors except warm ones? I will need these sliders. I set the lighten slider to zero to eliminate the lightning effect. Now I only darken the image. Before, after. On the contrary, if I only need to make some colors brighter, I move the darken slider to the left. Now I lighten the grass. Now the blue stone. Let's consider the difference between modes in the Luma drop-down list in the following example. In the Add mode, the darkening of colors increases their saturation, and the lightening of colors desaturates them. I darken the skin so it became oversaturated. You can control this effect using the gamma slider. Before, after. The Multiply mode works the opposite way. The color that becomes lighter gets saturated and the color that darkens gets desaturated. I darken the skin in the multiply mode, so I get a contrasting desaturated picture. For a steampunk photo, it works perfectly. Before, after. What if I need to darken the sky in this photo, but would like to preserve the reflection as it is? Both the sky and the reflection are in the blue channel, so if I work in the single point mode, I will either darken or lighten everything blue. It is convenient to use the Shadows Highlights mode for separate work on lightness within one color. If you click on any of the points with the Alt key pressed down, there is a mask that shows the border between the highlights and shadows. You can see that the sky belongs to the highlights and reflection belongs to the shadows. Now with the help of the highlights point, I darken the sky. And with the help of the shadows point, I make the reflection darker. At this time, the bright areas of the foliage became lighter and the dark areas became even darker. This one is the before. That is the after. The picture gets immediately more depth than dimension, hence the name of the tool, the volume. What if I need to lighten or darken two colors at the same time? For example, I need to darken blue flowers and grass. 
To do this, I select the darkest point mode. In the darkest mode, there are two points. Each point works as in the single mode, but the resulting picture combines the darkest area of the two versions. Points are not signed because they are equivalent. If I change them by places, nothing will change. Here is the before. There is the after. Points in the lightest mode work the opposite way. In this image, I need to lighten up the warm colors and darken cold ones. I do not want to darken the sky very much, so I move the darkened slider to the left a little. Let's zoom in this fragment of the image. You can see that the original image was more saturated. Therefore, I turn on the multiply mode, which increases a color saturation when it is brightened. The effect can be enhanced with the help of the gamma slider. This is the before and the after. Cold colors were slightly darkened and lost their saturation. Warm colors became lighter and more saturated. In conclusion, I will show how to use the volume to quickly convert an image to a black and white. This is often asked in support, so here's an example. On the AB tab, I reduce the saturation to zero. See what happens if I move the point? This is the fastest way to convert to black and white, which takes into account the original colors of the image. Let's make a black and white portrait in a high key. I turn on the lightest mode and lighten this image. With one point, I lighten the blue background. With another point, I lighten warm colors. The gamma slider can adjust the effect. I also will increase the brightness of the points by clicking on them and pulling up holding the shift key. That's what happened. This is the before, and that is the after. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Do not forget to practice. See you in the next video. Bye.